Yeah, race cars, the race cars have mechanics just like the guys around town have a mechanic for their car. And the race cars are no different. You know, Formula One's athletes the same way. They need yeah. little tunes, they need little checkups, little, you know, just to keep everything working, you know, in sync. Yeah, yeah. Make yourself at home, do your do. Welcome to my pad, this your lab. Go create your move. This episode is brought to you by Peterman Plumbing and Heating. What's good, everybody? Welcome to 99 Miles Per Hour with me, your host, Percy Garner. And I'm going to start adding producer Josh All. Um, we got a another guest in the studio. We haven't had one in a minute, but uh, I'm excited to introduce him. But before we introduce, I'm going to do what I should do every time, and that is make sure you guys subscribe, like, because that helps us get more views. And uh, obviously, we want 1,000 subscribers, and uh, we're far from that goal. We're at 300, I think, now. Um, so, I mean, it's been a year and a half. We got 300. So hopefully we can get the, this extra 700 quick and we got 300. But we appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we do like to thank our sponsor, Peterman Plumbing. And uh, man, you guys make this podcast possible. So we got one working, another sponsorship in the works. Uh, so hopefully we can have that here soon. Um, it might have been someone who was on the show. But uh, we also got another show coming up that's going to be pretty fun. Um, I might do a ride along with uh sheriff orvis campbell i'm just scared you know what i'm saying you never know what could happen with a live camera so <laughs> but uh but anyways without without further ado we're gonna get to our guest so today we have um uh someone who i've got to know over the last two years from the dover rotary and uh i probably need to go visit him but that's beside the point um he is a uh, board president of the school board and playing local and he has also been practicing <laughs> since 1986 before me and josh were born our guest today is dr ambrose Perduke jr how's it going how you doing percy <laughs> did you like was that a good introduction that was pretty good okay <laughs> i was waiting for the stumble but never happened <laughs> Well, uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. And that's actually, I've, I've talked about that. That's how I got my rainbow job. So you were there when that happened. Yes, I was. Um, but uh, no, I'm glad to finally get you on here. Um, for me, you know, we had to reschedule some things and move around. And I've been doing these shows solo now. But if I'm more comfortable having a guest in here, you know. But, you know, Josh is my guest on those solo shows. So thank you, Josh. But no, but uh, yeah, so we've had, we got a lot of exciting stuff going on. We had some good conversation before the camera turned on, so I wish we could have <laughs> put that in there, but um, I guess kind of just tell everybody in your words what you do. Yeah, that's, uh, it's, it's simple, you know, chiropractic care. You know, my specialty has been for 30 years, 35 years, spine, neck, back, um, pain, stiffness um you know it hasn't changed a whole lot but we've addressed more things as time has progressed gotcha. um it, you know getting the patient to be more active um i'll put a plug in for a local health club in the area you know now it's it's easy to get a patient to go think about exercising the cost is not a factor now you know and as long as they have some good instruction that takes takes away some of their concerns. So that's how my practice has changed over time. I can get the patient more involved. Okay. More active. Nice. So. And you you would say that's that's key to a lot. I've I've It is. I've heard a lot of people say, key "Oh, well, key to a lot." You know, yep. my grandpa, yep. you know, kind of went downhill when he stopped doing yep. this yep. or yep. stopped. And you know, ligaments are supposed to be elastic. Okay. Okay. But as we age, they become more plastic. So either you decide to keep them stretchable or they become harder. Now, gotcha. everyone focuses on muscles and, and we're tight muscles, yada, yada, yada. And that's, that's only part of it. Um, muscles are movers. Muscles are supporters. But the structure of the body, joints, elbows, shoulders, back, is ligaments. And you've got to keep them moving or they get rusty. Mm -hmm. The joints get rusty. And, you know, it's terrible to move a rusty joint. You know, yeah. it's hard, you know. Uh, and then, then throw the ball a little bit like you did pitching. You know, that joint gets rusty and there's a couple joints. And so you have to, you have to keep it moving. You have to give the body reason to keep it healthy or else it just lets it become more plastic. 
Gotcha. Okay, I never heard it explained like that. That makes it easy to understand. So I like that. Um, yeah, for me, obviously, I've come to learn a lot about my body lately because – you know, when you're in your twenties, you just don't think about it. You feel invisible, uh, invisible, invincible. invincible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And then when I was 27, which is I think earlier than most people, I started to feel a little breakdown. So that's why I've become more aware. And I'm not one of those guys that, you know, like LeBron or Tom Brady, that's, you know, drinking room temperature water, having the best diet yeah, and, yeah. you know, and these, these machines, do. Yeah, yeah. you know, and well, no. they've got a lot of money to spend on their body as well, yeah. but. Uh, I could have took a better advantage, uh, better advantage of the resources that I had, but um, that's something I'm trying to get into now. So I think it was it was very fitting to have you on the show and share some of your knowledge with us. Um, now I know I overheard uh, what you talked about in Rotary about you know the feet being the issue, and I kind of want to get to that later. Yeah, yeah. But but before we get to that, wh- like, what are some I guess common issues like with back pain or anything like that muscle? I don't want to say you know new stuff because you know as we talked before that's probably not as effective as the the remedies that have been around for a long time so yeah. i mean you know there's always discussion about cbd turmeric you know years ago it was glucosamine oh know, i bought into all those yeah yeah, yeah. turmeric and sure, glucosamine sure. i'm all in that. sure we all do <laughs> and 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 I, and I was talking before, you know, you got to look at the purity. You got to look at where you're buying it from. I mean, I, if you're buying it from the corner store, I mean, how good is the CBD oil? I mean, you know, wh- where do you want to buy your drugs from? You know, you want to buy them from good people or from <laughs> the corner people, you know? Um, you want to buy good drugs, you know? Yes, yes. But, uh, but, you know, that all comes. I mean, and some people, turmeric works well. Some people, turmeric has no effect. Some people, glucosamine works well. Some has nothing. I think there's... There's something that everyone's going to have to address, and it's the hardest pill to swallow, is you, you are what you eat. And if you don't want to eat careful, then you're going to look for a new remedy. And so if you think every morning should be a bowl of cereal <laughs> and some brown sugar on top of it with a big glass of OJ, you're going to have some problems. That's a lot of sugar for the body to handle. And that yeah. pancreas is not going to keep doing it. What does that have to do with uh, back and neck? As a chiropractor, I want you to heal without having to add things to it. And the healthier you eat, the better you heal. The more junk you do, the harder it is to heal. If you're a smoker, I'm going to tell you up front, you're going to have a hard time healing. You know, mm. you can, we can take all the things you want. We can rub all the ointments and take all the CBD. But if you're, if you're smoking, you're going to have a harder time to heal. And that arthritis is going to kick in a little earlier. Gotcha. So, so that, that, that's what I think, you know, when you say new, yeah, we'll, we'll see some new products and we'll try it out on a few people, but you know, turmeric's expensive. I mean, yeah. if you, if you can't buy it cheap, it's expensive to extract. It's hard to digest. That's the second thing. Most people mm. can't digest food re- real well. They're taking antacids, they're drinking uh, sodas, they're drinking things that neutralize stomach acid. Well, the only function of the stomach is to bathe it in acid to prep it to move to the next chamber. If you don't have the acid there, the food ain't getting prepped. You ain't digesting it. That's mm. it. So, so that's what. So, so that's, that's what we look for new things. We, you know, everyone's a little different. Some can tolerate it. You know, if I get people just looking at, you know, uh, more water, maybe some apple cider vinegar. Uh, oh, maybe my a, brother's been telling. Why did yeah, you have to say that? Yeah. My brother's been telling me to. Yeah, get it's that. it's simple. That's <laughs> a simple little thing to add. It's not expensive. Yeah. You know, you do that before you add the probiotics. You know, all the yogurt and all that, um, all that stuff, because you need to have a nice acid environment. That helps you to heal. Yeah. That makes you feel a little better, you know. So, so I, I do some things well. I don't drink. I soda hasn't really been a a big part of my. Yeah, well, as after you, you wouldn't. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. right. So, and I started drinking a lot of because my dentist told me to stop drinking Gatorade. So, yeah, it's Gatorade <laughs> has a couple chemicals that are hard on teeth. If you ever notice that Gatorade has even color throughout the whole bottle, well, they have to add, I think it's BHT to keep the coloring uniform throughout the bottle. BHT mm. is hard for us to break down and digest. I feel like that's a, a trend we see in a lot of products. Sure. The, with the colors. And sure. Stuff, colors, but. terrible. My yeah. son swam and the, you know, uh, when they were swimmers, the coach would tell them during season, no pop. And, and the boys listened to the coach, but when dad told them, eh, and they didn't drink a lot of pop, but it was yeah. a little bit, but during season, no pop at all. Mm, no okay. Pop. 
So. Well, I grew up with a guy. Do you remember Drew Edwards, Josh? Yeah. So he wasn't allowed. I don't know if he was allergic, but he didn't. I don't think he consumed any caffeine or or it was really low sugar like after the games we would all have like capri suns yeah, 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 yeah. all sport you yeah, know, yeah all sport <laughs> sure sure but now and he would just you know water and i'm just like man this child it stinks <laughs> but now that i think about it it's it's almost like one of my other friends too who you know his dad was strict and, and now down the road you're like ah. Oh. i mean i still want to be a kid and have it sometimes but sure sure the level that i was consuming sugar and caffeine obviously you sh- should avoid caffeine when you're a kid but the levels i was consuming that at because i'm a chocolate addict sure. and reese cups and they just came out with the darn bats and pu- uh, pumpkins already for oh the, i know it's already started oh season, right? it started to change i have to buy it so well any, <laughs> a- anything in moderation percy is, is actually okay you just have to i mean if you're a, if the kid's a couch potato then he needs a little but if, if the kid's a high-end athlete, swimming, football, wrestling, basketball all year, you know, they could probably tolerate a little bit of Capri Sun or all sport, a little bit of it. Gotcha. But they, they, know, they know water. Yeah. Uh, most of them are, most athletes, young and old, are getting to understand they need water. Yeah. They need water. Yeah. I just know I feel a lot better. I would, if I, if I just give you like an ex- example, when I was uh, playing football in college, our summer workouts were her- like horrendous, and we were on turf, so it was adding fifteen oh, degrees yeah. and, and you know the first workout they tried to help us out that we'd start at four o'clock, <laughs> so uh you'd get out there, yeah, you run and you do all that stuff, but then the one day I literally drank a gallon of water before four o'clock, and I feel like I didn't cruise through the workouts, but I was just like. Man, I can hydration. handle this now. Yeah, it's hydration. <laughs> so, it's key. It's hydration. Yeah. Everybody, it's even my older patients, hydration. They don't drink enough water. Yeah. And I know this, that like when I would get massages or something, you know, they would say, hey, make sure you drink, you know, before and after the massage. So, um, and I, and I, you know, I always thought chiropractics, you know, no offense. I was thought just like credit cards or whatever. Oh, it's, you know, it's bad. You don't want to do that. And now I figured out like, okay, you kind of need to use a credit card to get your life together. I mean, they're not, it's not best for everybody. I don't know if that's a great analogy. But well, <laughs> credit card no, and chiropractic. So uh, chiropractic is not as addictive as a credit card. Yeah. Um, however, <laughs> but, but think about this and, and I'll put the onus back on, on something you said, but now do you go to the dentist? Yes. Did your teeth hurt right now? No. Why do you go to the dentist then? See, so the uh, thing is, is that the thing is, 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 Teeth are so well, we, we are so well indoctrinated on how to take care of our teeth and gums too, you know, that we do that. But yet I've got patients coming in that have all dentures at 57 years old and they're, they can't stand up straight. So, you know, if you, if you learn and understand what a chiropractor can offer, that's what the benefit is, is what can we offer you? Not some people don't need a lot, but yeah. they need a little probably. I, I haven't, I haven't met a person yet that doesn't need some help. We had last night, the rotary picnic. And I yeah. looked around and I saw a lot of, a lot of bad, a lot of bad posture. Yeah. I was going to say posture. a lot of bad posture. Now posture is posture good because it looks good. Or is, is there a function be having good posture? It was a function. Remember, when I was in playing basketball as a kid, we do line drills and we were just winded. And the coaches would tell us to put our hands when we're done over yeah, our head, right? Remember not that? Not on your knees, okay. yeah. Not on your knees, right. Because why? You're trying to expand the lungs so you can expel all that moisture and all that uh, all the air and get air back in. So think of the person who has bad posture. Are they expelling all their, mm. getting all, are they getting good fill? So really that's what posture is, is it's allowing us to breathe better. Yeah. So and, that's, it's important. And I don't mean to like, you know, feed whatever you're saying. It's just whenever you speak, I have like examples that fit. There was a, a kid who I played with uh, from Canada and he was in the Phillies organization with me. He was drafted, I think maybe a year or two after me. Um, but he was, you know, he looked like a, he, we literally called him avatar because he was like six, six, whatever, and just jacked but he had really bad posture. posture so the Phillies were into that you know and he actually I had bad posture too I still do but they they gave us posture shirts and stuff like that but he actually wore his and I did not he would actually wear his at home and stuff like that so three years later he's just he's healthier he's carving he's pitching great and you just notice you're like dang Ethan like 
Well, it's standing up straight and he's like yeah man those posture shirts and stuff i focused on it and, it, and they were into breathing they did haruska air and, air and water the body needs it yeah. and, and let's go a little bigger picture percy think about this how does how does everything communicate in the body via the brain yeah via nerves so the spine protects those nerves so what if there's just a little rub on the nerve well, that could irritate, that could af- affect its transmission. That's what the chiropractors we've always talked about: a little bit of nerve pressure, not a bad pinch. What's a little bit do? And so I think what you just explained is what your friend, once he changed his posture, he breathed better. He had less resistance. The nerves were able to get better messages to the the small muscles around the lungs and allow him to feel better and breathe gotcha. better. So. It's a bigger picture. Yeah, there, yeah. There's a lot more to chiropractic than just back and neck pain. It's all neuro. It's all nerves. It's neurology, and yeah. uh, we we affect that through the manipulation and through trying to realign the bones a little bit. And and I feel like just to go a little bit deeper on that, I feel like I want to see if I can research, you know, the nerves and muscle performance. And because I forget his name, he was this famous. Um, like he worked out a lot of professional athletes out in California. His son played quarterback, but didn't have the, a great career. I forget his name, but he's he's well known, and he had some type of different workout, you know, methods where he would do a lot of. And I think he worked with Kobe and stuff. He would do a lot of nervous system things, and you know, I struggled with you know pitching and repeating my my same motion every time. So I was always wondering, like, I wonder. Uh, of course, after the fact, I was like, I wonder if this has any effect on that. So I might like kind of research. Well, Franco Colombo was uh, the bodybuilder from years back. Him and Arnold were at the same generation and he became a chiropractor and he would lecture and talk about what he learned about neurological control and muscle function. So it was, it's been there. It just hasn't made it down to us little people, but it's all there. I mean, okay. the Olympic team, we're just finishing Olympics. Uh, I know there were three team Kairos that went out with the team to Tokyo and, and they do, you know, the various athletes want different work. Um, and I, I think it's there. It just hasn't made it down to us little people around here yeah. yet. So. Yeah. And I like to, it's hard nowadays that there's a lot of information out there and you sure. don't know if it's right. Sure. Or just, sure. You know. yeah. yeah. You definitely don't want to watch any videos on the chiropractors and the adjustments. They scare me sometimes. Oh, I, the guy with the towel and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, there's this big no. famous one on YouTube. He does a whole bunch of like oh, pro yeah. wrestlers and stuff. He's this big ginormous dude. I think yeah. his name starts with a B, but the stuff that I've seen a guy on, you know, to the, you know, we had some pretty big names on the Phillies roster. And, you know, they had this uh, this Jewish guy who would follow them around. He They would pay him tons of money. And I saw him do work on a player uh, that I'm not going to name. And I, it just looked great. I had never seen anything like that. Yeah, yeah. But that, I kind of, that opened my eyes, though. When I yeah. saw these $20 million players paying for this, that's right. I was like, huh. But then that's when I was like, okay. I kind of, I kind of understand. I kind of, that's what made me kind of get into chiropractic and want to go get a chiropractor and do some work. So yeah, race cars, the race cars have mechanics, just like the guys around town have a mechanic for their car and the race cars are no different. You know, formula ones, athletes, the same way. They need yeah. little tunes, they need little checkups, little, you know, just to keep everything working, you know, in sync, um, yeah. go down to Keeneland, Lexington. You're going to see some chiropractors working on horses too. Really? Oh yeah. Big, big, oh, wow. big market for that. Uh, they don't use hands. They use a mallet or a hammer, but it's it's Ooh, not as aggressive. Sounds, well, that it, sounds yeah, aggressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. <laughs> it sounds aggressive. It's not quite that way, but I mean, yeah. they 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 do things with the racehorses. Oh yeah, big time. Right. I I know for me, I'm trying to you know get to that stage now where you know because I see you, and uh, you know I don't know your age, but I'm 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 sure if I had to guess, I'd be lower than what you are. Um, just of how, just of how you carry yourself, the way you move, and I'm like, hmm, you know, I, I want, I don't want to be per, uh, a person when I'm, you know, 70 years old, where I'm just like, well, I'm just gonna sit on the couch and watch TV because I can't move. Yeah, I, you know. I, I, I turned 60 this past July, and I, I said to myself three years ago that when 60 comes, I'm not going to not be able to move, yeah. and I did not like my physical. Uh, appearance and my strength. How many years ago was that? Did three you, years ago. Three years ago? No, no. I was 57. I'm, I turned 60 this past July. And I said three years ago, I, wa- I, I wanted to get more serious. I always would dabble with a little bit of yeah. exercise and time was a factor, you know? 
And, um, but I, I, I learned one thing about aging that you young guys should think about too, is that what keeps us young is our testosterone. Mm. And about the age of 50, it starts to drop down unless you give the body a reason to keep it strong. Yeah, and it, sure. it's not walking. It's not going to be the yoga. It's hard physical lifting weights. And I learned, I did my blood test at 57, and it was at this level, the testosterone, I didn't like it. To a year of lifting heavy, I, I raised it up a considerable amount. Wow, okay. And so even now this year, it's staying that level. Now, how do I do that? I lift weights. You yeah. know, my goal at 60 was to bench, dip, and do pull-ups. Gotcha. And uh, it was tough, but I mean, I realized that if I don't strain myself a little bit, you know, stress it, there's no reason for the testosterone to stay high. True. So just think about that. I mean, everyone, that's really the key is that we want to keep that youth and that uh, vigor. Well, that's not through CBD or another pill. That's through physical activity. Yeah, and I'm convinced. I, yeah. I see it. I see it on people, patients. Yeah. And, and I like that because that also is just extra motivation. And for me, when I try to do things, you know, as I get older, I want to modify my exercising, but it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, feel as good. Yeah. And I'm used to tearing the muscles down and rebuilding and tearing them down. Got to, you got and, to. And it gives me a reason. Like you want to, you like, all right, I got benched today. Yep. It's exciting. Yep. You know, if you're we like, Hey, I'm, and what's I'm, even better. I got my wife to come with us. Now we both uh, worked out together and right. she did, hated it at first. Now she really likes it. She has some goals. She, she can bend. She does dumbbells and she'll do some legs and she does, she has strong legs for, she's 60 also. Wow. She has strong legs and she likes it. She feels better. It's good for her bones. Mm -hmm. Her blood test for bones reversed. Really? Yeah. In three years. So and then that was the reason too. We, you know, we put this in blood tests and she's going, you know, she's 57 years old and you know, women are going through changes of life mm -hmm. and their bone density. Well, she put some stress on the bones. She's eat, we're eating better and that reversed and her blood levels just flipped. And wow. she said she feels much better with it. So that's what I think I learned. And, you know, not the, the new stuff. What's what works and, and what ha helps people is a nice, vigorous exercise program. And it's important to note after you saying all that, he didn't say three months. He said three years. years. So you yeah. have to continue. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing this yeah. Stuff. You can't do anything. It, it took me a year to get the, the soreness out of the tendons, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, it took me a year to figure out, you know, how to, how to do a good bench, but no, it, yeah. it was, it, it's been good. It's been a nice learning experience. It's been good. Uh, blood pressure, cholesterol, you know, uh, testosterone, uh, sleeping, yeah. I can go on, you know, it's, it's, it's important, yeah. man. we don't realize it, but you know, you hit an age, a point in your an age where things just start to change and you have to do something to, to uh, avoid it. Yeah. And I, I, I'm realizing how important sleep is, but, um, before we, you know, wrap, wrap it up and, and kind of get to the end of this show, I want to make sure I touch on, you know, the feet and stuff, but before we get to the feet, What's your opinion on cycling and how, how is that beneficial to the body? If you believe it is besides it just being exercise, is there anything? Oh, I think it's an exercise. It's an excellent way to, uh, you mean, um, stationary in a room or you mean on the road? Either one. See, I Has think it, there's a, okay. On the road's tough. I don't think you can get a good workout. My son, we did it for a little while and the roads is dangerous. You know, you can't really open up. People are going to, it's worse than a motorcycle. You know, they don't really see bicycles. Now, spinning in a, in a room, oh man, that's that's terrific because you're going up and down and speeds and intensity and, and the interval is what's good for the heart. Yeah. And that's excellent. And if 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 people need a good uh, weight reduction program, they need to work interval training. If they need a good strength training to help build up muscles and just tone up, they need weights. Mm -hmm. You can do both for the amateur athlete. You, an athlete, you, you benefit on spinning and doing a little bit of lightweight probably. That'd be good. But for the amateur that, that comes in the office, I want them to keep their heart rate with like a Fitbit or something while they're lifting and not resting. And that's a good interval training too for the heart. But yeah. Oh yeah, spinning, bicycling, that, that's excellent stuff for heart. Gotcha. Okay, good, good, good. So I want to hear that. So, um, <laughs> um, okay, let's touch on, you know, the feet, because I heard you say this and it intrigued me because I've never paid attention to my feet, how I walk. 
A little bit how I walked. I just wanted to make sure I didn't have a, you know, a flat foot. And mm -hmm. once I didn't have a flat foot, I think I'm fine. But yeah, yeah. obviously it's not the case. <laughs> no, there's a lot of flat feet. There are a lot of people with bad feet and they're not, they're not maybe, uh, maybe when they sit, they hold their foot up and they see an arch and they think, oh, that's an arch. But when they stand, their foot rolls in and it's pronating. It's yeah. heavily, it's flat. And that's a flat foot. So let's think about this. My father was a bricklayer and the most important part of the house is the foundation. And way back when they, they used to dig the, the trench for this foundation and dad painstakingly would measure with a, a site, uh, a site, um, a viewer, I can't think what it's called now, um, a tripod with it and he would measure it and get the height of the concrete exact where it's all level. Because he said, if we don't get the foundation level, then the carpenters can't put the, 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 the walls up on the block wall that's level and the mm -hmm. roof goes up crooked. Oh, okay. So, so I have a patient comes in and they're having knee pain and their back's hurting them. And I look, I say, well, your back, I know why. I know why your knee's hurting you, your flat foot. Well, no, I, I, I have these cushions in my shoes all the time. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're little cushions. I said, no, no, you need an arch support. And years ago, I don't want to knock any of my podiatrist friends, but <laughs> to have a, a insole, you have to have, it, have, have it made by them. And it was like two or $300. And, yeah. and some of my patients would do it. Some would just put it off. Uh, now there's, there's, there's a nice company out of Cincy, uh, where they make prefabbed medium firm orthotics and it's a simple fix. You put them in the shoe and whether you're at age, your children to senior, they work for everybody. Okay. And then I tell them the rules of, of this are now you have to wear all the time. You, you can't go just to the store without it. And you can't go barefoot in the house. Mm. You have to find a pair of, uh, I, I recommend a pair of uh, slides, uh, a pair of Birkenstocks. They have an art support in them. Okay. Or this company also makes a flip flop with an art support. But you have to support it all the time. You can't go sometimes and take it out, especially if you're young and you're trying to develop the arch in a youngster. You know, before the age of 12, you must develop that arch because once 12, 13 comes, now it's set. Mm. So if their foot is not changed by then, it's set. Wow, well, okay. Not terrible, but you just have to support it. You yeah. know, if they play high school golf and they're flat footed, you got, you got to put something in their shoe. If they run track, uh, my sons, you know, they, they, they're just a little bit pronated. And when they realized when they didn't have their arts in there and they were playing golf, uh, their knees would be sore. Um, in, in, in your experience, pronation is way more popular than uh, opposed to supination, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very few people. Everyone has to walk on the outside of the shoe to, to heel strike and they roll into the toe. Very few people actually stay on the outside of their foot. If they do, they have a bigger problem than I can handle. They, yeah, yeah, then it's yeah. time for the foot doctor. But most people are just... They're planting their foot and they're just rolling it in and they're just knocking the knee out of alignment. I see women all the time and needing knee replacement. They weren't tackled. There's no soccer. There's no injury. Why is their knee wearing out? You know, well, that's because they had bad shoes, bad feet. And now a knee wears out. Yeah. You know? I, I didn't take, take it as, as serious. I wish when I was playing because literally I would start working a finish line. And of course it's not a, a great orthotic or a good sure. insole, but I was paying $20 for these little sure. blue athlete sure. insoles. And yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. yeah. And you know, they're little cheap ones. So imagine what a real yeah. one could do. And I was just like, man, I wish I would have had these in my cleats, my oh, basketball yeah. shoes, everything. Yeah. Yeah. My son, my youngest played basketball at, up at Glen Oak and in summer leagues, uh, three of the kids were hanging, would hang out together and they all developed Osgood slaughters mm -hmm. one summer. Uh, yep. I, I was like, that. what the heck now? <laughs> That's tendonitis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, It's yeah, tendonitis. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's because they're flat. They're, they're wearing slides, flip-flops all summer long, and their basketball shoes are flat. So I, I got my son to put his orthotics back in, and I got the other two boys. I bought them pairs and put them in their shoe. In one week, they both, they all came in and said, they can't believe the Osgood slaughter has gone. I said, you never had Osgood slaughter. You had tendonitis. They wore it all summer long. Knock on wood. They're doing great. <laughs> Osgood slaughter is like something with your growth though, right? Yeah, it's growth plate stick, yeah. sticking out. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's a very different condition and they didn't have it, but they were diagnosed by the, by people that they know. I won't yeah. say who, but 
I, that's probably I would have told him. Oh, your knee hurts, and you're how old? Oh yeah, yeah you could probably get Oscar Slaughter. That's it. <laughs> that's but, what I was told. That's it. But it's it's so common, Percy, to have that tendonitis. You mm-hmm. know, growth growth pains. I heard when I was a kid, growth pains. No, yeah. I was flat. I was flat footed. I was mm. I was beating that up on my feet all the time, and my knees were hurting. You know, yeah, because so. when they don't have the basketball shoes, they got flip flops. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, all right, last question. I want to know how you got into. What made you want to get in? <clears throat> To this field? <laughs> it's a, a, a very easy question. Like I said earlier, my father was a bricklayer. And my dad said to me, I was laying brick with him in the summers. And he said, you know, I could teach you how to do this. Or you can, you know, go study college. I said, that's fine. He hurt his back. Went to the chiropractor. And I was amazed at, back in 1971, what the chiropractor did to my father to make him feel better. And I really liked the hands-on. I mean, I, I liked working with my hands and I liked learning about that anatomy. And, and so I always kept that in mind. And in seventh grade, I hurt my neck in wrestling. I couldn't move my neck. Wow. And so my mom took me to the chiropractor. And I mean, a couple of visits, I was turning my head. Shortly afterwards, I felt better. Uh, believe it or not, I actually had less sneezing allergies. And that, that's, what, that's what threw me right there was that I couldn't believe that would affect my allergies. Uh, that's a whole other story. We'll come back and talk about that one. <laughs> but, um, but I just got so enamored with using your hands. And, and I liked the idea of not using drugs. Yeah. You know, the shots for, uh, the, well, back then shots for the pain or, or the medicine for the pain. I liked using my hands and, and, and I just, I went from there. I, I, I was going to, to a chiropractor all throughout high school and college. And then, you know, I said, that's a natural fit for me. Yeah. My wife, she's always went to a chiropractor. I never knew anything about it. And then, um, and she's also natural too. She loves, she doesn't like taking sure. over like normal drugs. She sure. Does sure. all the natural, she actually, um, she didn't another, take the normal drugs. No, no. normal drugs. Okay. <laughs> she takes the unusual <laughs> drugs. That's good. She takes a car, like a Carmela's, you know, nature sunshine. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's so, good. uh, and then she's all in the silver shield and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's I good. don't know. Yeah. But no, um, you know, I'm glad you shared a lot of good stuff. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to rewatch this. So I catch some of the stuff cause I'm trying to listen and stuff, but then I'm also thinking, okay, where can I take this? So, yeah. Anyways, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to have you come back, and uh, we appreciate you coming by. Um, is there anything else you feel like you? Based, yeah. I feel like we covered a lot. And we I covered like, a lot. Yeah. I have a lot of information. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if people just pay attention to what they do with themselves, you know, Netflix, you know, no marathons on the couch, you know, just just watch your postures and habits. Just get on your bike in uh-huh. the basement and move watch Netflix. Bit. Yeah, move a little bit. Yeah, move a little bit. <laughs> yeah, That's right. So, move a little bit. Um, but yeah, I appreciate everything you shared, man. Uh, uh, I mean, we just had the great picnic last night, so I guess yeah. I'll see you again Monday. But yeah. uh, I appreciate everybody who tuned in. Hopefully you got some good. You had to. I mean, come on now. Take some notes. Just do what he says. It's not very hard. You know, we just like to care about things that don't really matter. I'm one of them. Anyways, <laughs> get on my soapbox again, Josh. <laughs> but uh, no, make sure you guys subscribe and uh, and like. And if, if you like the video, obviously, if you don't, you can dislike it or just leave it alone. Don't don't give us a thumbs down. Um, but we, I love doing the show. I love having guests in. Uh, keep it going. And thanks uh, to Peterman Plumbing for allowing us to keep doing this. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you Tuesday. I've been premiering these videos, though. So you can catch it live on the, the time that I decided. It's like a TV show. We say it's going to go live at 8 o'clock or something. So tune in and interact with us. Leave some comments below. That's what I should have said at the beginning. Okay. Oh, well. Oh, well. We'll get it done one of these days. But thank you guys again. We'll see you next Tuesday. Peace.